This is actually the microphone I used when I was 13 years old to record my very first rap songs, which thankfully you guys will never hear because it'd be very embarrassing. Romance and slow dance for girls who might got no chance. I'm no man, so what can I do but sit through on the cocaine? And Hi guys, this is June. Soman's actually out of town this week, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a quick vlog episode uh, telling you guys how I was first introduced to School for Good and Evil series and a little bit about myself, but I don't want to bore you guys too much. So the way I first discovered the School for Good and Evil books, there's a bookstore in New York City called The Strand, and I go there every month or so to check out what new books are out. The month I went, there was this really cool looking book, and I was just like, opened it, looked through. In the first couple pages, there was a map and I just like love books with maps in them. Big fan of like Lord of the Rings and uh, the Chronicles of Narnia books. The school just came alive to me because I could physically see where the gates were and it said trespassers will be killed. And I was like, whoa, trespassers will be killed. I thought this was supposed to be a like a fluffy fairy tale book. So it immediately had me hooked. I'm a pretty skinny, non-Tedros ideal of beauty kind of person. So that scene where Agatha gets the makeover from Professor Dovey in book one, everyone's giving her looks in the hallway and then when she finally sees herself in the mirror, she realizes that she hasn't changed at all, she just had confidence. Reading that, it made me feel better about myself and feel like it does that for a lot of people. And that whole theme that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, it's a cliche, but it's really important to make to keep making fresh because you can like tell that to yourself every day but you know until you read it in a scene that's actually true like the school for good and evil one it doesn't really like stick with you and you don't actually believe it another thing i love about uh, school for good and evil is that it's an actual physical school where people go to learn like a skill right and i'm like a huge nerd i really like learning and putting in lots of hard work seeing yourself slowly improve which is kind of why i, I moved to new york in the first place uh, i came in to like study film i guess new york is like my school for good and evil, except instead of learning how to be like a fairy tale hero or a villain, I came here uh, to go to film school. For my graduation, I had to finish a graduation movie. So for that project, I made this movie called Nightman. It's about a medieval knight stranded in New York City, and he has to find his true love to get back to his own time. I'm editing the movie now, and I'm hoping I can share it with you guys next year. While we're on the topic of films, I can't tell you guys how excited I am for the School for Good and Evil movie. It's gonna be epic and romantic and hilarious and heartbreaking and all these things rolled into one. I feel like I'm joining the Ever Never TV team and the School for Good and Evil family. It's such an exciting time. It's such a vibrant, colorful, funny community. So on the note of the website and the Ever Never TV contests and special assignments, I wanted to announce the winner of the plant naming contest for Soman's Dying Shrub, um, as well as the Survive Your Classroom contest. So starting with Soman's Shrub, very close race between Herbert and Greg the Undying, but Herbert squeaked by so for as long as Soman's plant is still with us we have christened it Herbert here are the winners for the classroom survival tips first we have Elsa dog 1234 with the great threat of refusing to participate in class since she's the only one who does next is Faith Rose who showered her teacher with sumptuous compliments and taught me words I didn't even know existed um, third, we have Amika Woods Beyond, who just had really sincere reasons for why the poster would get non-readers into reading. Um, fourth, we have Hester417, who offered to do her classmates homework if they rioted with her. Next, we have Shadowstorm12 and Ashdog22, who both had really heartfelt comments about why they could really use a poster at this time in their lives. Then we have Celine270, who put their reason in a poem where the first letter of each line spells out Crystal of Time. Next we have Happily Ever After Girl, who said they'd threaten their teacher with cheese tasting toothpaste. We also have XX Charlotte of Woods and Beyond XX, whose teacher Mr. Hurd has actually already read the SGE books. Last but not least, we have Ever After Tale, who gave their reason in both Yield English and a mathematics equation. So remember to email us at evernevertv at gmail.com for your prize, and we're really looking forward to seeing your emails. Uh, that's all for this week. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week.